it's the third week of Garb August, and I kind of changed my plans a little bit. I'd started out, I was going to read the Joyce McKinney case book, and I'm kind of halfway through it, but I ended up getting another just as trashy nonfiction, Tales of Hollywood the Bazaar, by John Austin, that I just kind of got immersed in and ended up reading. So this is actually my one for anything goes garbage week. This one is very much along the lines of Kenneth Anger's Hollywood Babylon, only Hollywood Babylon and Kenneth Anger, Kenneth Anger lived up to the name. He was very catty and very hateful about a lot of the different actors. There was a lot of very petty, unfounded rumors that he liked to throw around, and he put a lot of really salacious photos in it. I know this because I've read Hollywood Babylon, um, both of them, I believe, because there's a Hollywood Babylon too. But I've he put a lot of salacious stuff in there that was really f fairly unsavory. It it was not it was it was very much meant to humiliate the actors and the people involved and different things along those lines. So it was a very not, it's not a pleasant read. It's, it's, yes, it's, it's trashy. And I read Hollywood Babylon mainly because he did cover some of the murder cases and different things. And I've always liked true crime. So that was my main interest in it, but he did it in a very, a very tabloidy type way. John Austin does something a little bit similar, only he's much, much nicer to the actors. That is very, very clear. He's very, he is writing stuff that is gossip and some stuff that is rumor and speculation and different things. He tends to back his rumor and speculation up a bit more. And he talks about some cases I'd never heard of before. He also is kind of on a kind, a kinder level when it comes to talking about the actors. Specifically, Jane Mansfield, he talks about. He talks about when he first found out that she had died in the car accident. And he goes into some of her more salacious stuff and the fact that, and stuff that I did know about Jane's Man, Jane Mansfield is she desperately, desperately tried to be a Marilyn Monroe type figure, but never could quite get it and never could quite be taken. And even Marilyn Monroe was not taken seriously, but she even, even more so. It was like a downgrade of Marilyn types. Mamie Van Doren was that type uh, of actress too, but it was a lot of stuff along those, along those lines with her life and just weird stuff she got involved in. And while he does talk about that, he also talks about how he genuinely liked her and she genuinely seemed like she was trying so hard. And so he does set a kinder tone to a lot of these actors, unless he thinks the actor did something. He's not particularly nice to Burt Reynolds in here because he thinks Burt Reynolds had something to do with the murder. And the more you look at the case, as you look at it, you're like, huh, he's got a point. He might have something to do with that murder. Um, and, and just kind of what happened after it, that they were like even partying down when the, when the guy was being moved to the morgue, that you're just like, sort of like, oh, that was a, that's a weird case. So he addresses some of those. Um, the one Burt Reynolds was involved in was Sarah Miles' manager, and this manager seems like a, just a, the strangest connection between the two, and like he was sort of a hanger-on that got involved with her a very odd very odd situation and the whole death finding him is very very odd and you do kind of think that there was possibly a a some sort of something more went on there he talks about basically if you complained or filed any sort of lawsuits against anybody if you were treated badly you were blacklisted and he goes into great detail about that. He uses Raquel Welch as an example. So it's, he's not wrong. When he talks about the sexual harassment section, 
he talks about a lot of different actresses and he doesn't say names, actors and actresses. He doesn't say names, but he does sort of, once we got the whole Harvey Weinstein stuff and all that stuff started coming out, this was written back in like 92. So this has been going on for forever. So depend, knowing what we know that came out of all that, I, he's like 100% accurate, I'm sure, in what he's talking about here with, with what these actresses had to put up with just being harassed constantly by everybody he talks about stalkers it's he kind of talks about them in an odd way he talks about them in a way that this is something that actors and actresses aren't aren't told about weren't told about much until you end up with somebody murdered he talks about how that just doesn't seem like it didn't seem like a fair thing all these these stalking situations that no one really kind of addressed for a long time or realized that they were as bad as they were. And he goes into great detail about that. He also, this one, he doesn't do as many of the true crimes in that one. He talks a lot about some bizarre deaths and he talks about how the Oscars are pretty much rigged, which I think we all kind of know anyway with that. So, I can't, in his, yes, it's trashy, but I also think he's not wrong in some of the stuff he's talking about. He seems a much more honest reporter, honest tabloid person than the Hollywood Babylon books are. Those just seemed like rumors and basically anything to run some people into the ground. John Austin's feels much more like he was either aware of this stuff happening at the time i almost feel like he was it seems like somebody who i heard this and i was aware of this and know this was going on he he seems like he actually was more exposed to the truth of some of the things happening so this 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 whole thing actually is pretty interesting it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be because it is, it does, he doesn't go into as much about the specific cases, some of the specific cases. He does in a few, but some of the specific cases here. He does that in the Hollywood Unsolved Murders that he does, Hollywood Mysteries, Unsolved Mysteries, that he has two volumes of, that I have one of them. But he, like I said, it's trashy, but it's a different type of trashy than I expected. It's trashy without a mean spirit to it. And if there's a mean spirit, it's to people that probably deserved it. Producers who were just gross and doing horrible things or actors who were just spoiled and doing horrible things. And he is not just gross for the sake of being that or salacious for the sake of being that. And I appreciate that about this one. So I will, will read some other stuff from John Austin and see what he has to say about some of these other cases because this was interesting enough. But that was my third read for Garbogist. And I've still got that shorter book that I have floating around, but this one is the one that ended up getting finished because I was more interested in it. And this week I will be reading Go Ask Alice because it's the WTF week. And I have already started reading it. How did anybody ever think this book was written by a teenager at any stage? Because I'm going to read some selective passages. This book, as somebody who teaches teenagers, as somebody who is like around teenagers every workday, no teenager has ever talked like this ever. And the fact that Sparks was, was able to convince a bunch of people that this was actually a teenager's diary is amazing and showed that nobody at the time actually talked to teenagers ever at any point had never been exposed to teenagers they were just like oh drugs and and crazy material and it was of course the um the witch hunt of drugs that had kind of had had moved into being popular at that time and that is what sparks really market her herself on and they still this is a more recent copy of the book they still do not mention who the actual author is and i still think that is a very very sketchy practice on how you're putting a book out because they do not put it anywhere in there who this woman actually was who wrote this book and 
I feel that is still a marketing ploy that is being used very, very sketchily. And we'll get into it because I've got a lot of feelings about Go Ask Alice because I, I really dislike that author a lot in, in what she pulled with it and kind of the precedent that sets in sort of pseudo fake memoirs and whatever else. I mean, if we're going to drag the guy who wrote a million little pieces to the point that he has to change change his uh, pen name to Pitticus Lore and write the I Am Number 4 series, then how did this woman get away with this? And how is she still, still kind of being allowed to get away with this uh, much later? So we'll get into all that next week.